Hi everyone and welcome to my latest building tutorial. Thank you for tuning in. Yeah, in this one I'm going to show you how to take these 8 pin ICs in the middle here, the SO8s. There's three different uh, SO8s here as you can see. I'm going to show you three different methods for taking them off. I'm going to clean up all these pads afterwards around them. Then I'll show you three different methods to sort of reassemble new ICs in these three positions. I've sort of covered this video slightly before. I showed you four different ways of taking these types of components off. But in this video, I'm going to sort of show you how to reassemble them using sort of solder paste, sort of general solder and, uh, yeah, hot air gun, two irons, example, and, uh, yeah, a few different tools. So hopefully within these methods, you'll find one that suits your needs. So what we're going to do, we're going to get straight on with taking this one off. We're going to use a standard hot air gun for this one. And then I'll do these two with sort of two different methods. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you find something useful and hopefully you enjoy it. So what we do, we get straight on with taking the first one off. All right, so we come on to the first method where I'm going to take the uh, the IC in the middle of your screen. That's this one up here. I'm going to take that one off with a hot air gun. Uh, there will be a bit of air noise during the uh, during the process. So yeah, I apologise for the noise, but that's basically just the sound of the, the heat gun doing its stuff. So what I like to do first, just like to add a little bit of flux along each joint. This might speed uh, sort of the uh, the melting of the solder and sort of aid you. So I've got my heat gun for this uh, this IC. I've got it set to about 360 degrees centigrade. So what I do when I'm sort of generally uh, sort of taking the component off a hot gun, I just sort of circle the, uh, the component you need to get off. Just to sort of try and heat both sides up at once. Hopefully the nozzle's sort of not blocking the uh, blocking your view too much. You should start to see that go soon. Generally these components aren't too bad to get off. It's a little bit awkward doing this because, uh, you know, for the sake of the video, I'll generally get the sort of nozzle directly over the top more. But um, yeah, just for the sake of the video, I can't really on this. Yeah, just keep circling it slightly so you're getting both sides. Eventually you'll see the solder will go nice and shiny and that's the time to take it off. The worst thing you can do with these is try and sort of take it off too early and pull the pads off. So hopefully that's going soon. Just give it a, I think it's going shiny. There you go. Let's just lift it off nice and clean. So as you can see I've got nice eight eight nice pads that are all sort of still attached nice and clean. So there's a little bit of solder still on the pads. But what I'll do after I whip that off like I will do with the other two. I'll clean them all up and then uh, yeah we go from uh, fitting the new ones. So that's sort of part one taking it off of a hot air gun. So what I do now, I move on to the second method. Just taking the second device off, that's this middle one there. I'm going to basically take this one for two soldering irons. Now this is, I love this method. I've sort of done a complete video on the uses of two soldering irons. So yeah, hopefully uh, you might benefit from it. So what I'll do with this one, just run a blob up each side, just shorten all the pins out. Sometimes these sort of stretch apart, but you will get there in the end. Trouble when the legs are a little bit apart, they are uh, sometimes difficult to blob. Same on this side, just run a bead around the back. But yeah, I love this method, it's great for sort of doing SO 14s, 16s, even larger ICs. All we do then, get your two irons, and I try and turn the uh, sort of device over, and then just sort of get your tweezers and take it off. So yeah, just melt the solder up the sides. Just melt on all the joints as you go. Just try and turn it over. Just drop it down there. You just get your tweezers and you take it off. It's quite a simple method. If it's done correctly, it's uh yeah, it's really easy. And you can just clean the sort of solder off after. If you've got any shorts, just pull them off. Just melt that and pull that one off. I'll wick all these off afterwards, so uh yeah, what we do clean them all up and uh, but yeah this is a great method like I say I've used it all for lots of different rework and uh, yeah it never lets me down so if you haven't got a hot air gun so you can just do it with two irons so all this solder after I just clean it off as you see you've got all the pads sort of still intact nicely no damage to any devices so yeah it's a good method if you haven't got a hot air gun so uh, that's method number two and what I do then I'll sort of go on to method number three then we'll clean them all up Right, so coming to method number three, where I'm just going to sort of scalp all these legs through. 
Um, I don't generally use cutters when I sort of cut legs uh, on sort of pads like this because uh, I think it stresses the pads a bit. But generally, I wouldn't sort of uh, normally cut sort of, sort of legs on these type of devices. I'd normally use one of the other two methods. But um, if you've got a really large IC and two irons won't do it and you haven't got a sort of hot air gun, cutting the legs is a good option. Now, these are quite difficult to cut because the sort of space between them. They're quite sort of wide legs and uh, yeah, when you get fine pitch devices, the legs are sort of really narrow, easy to cut. These are a little bit more difficult, so they will take a little bit longer. Um, so what I do first, I literally score down each sort of leg about four or five times to get sort of halfway down. I keep the knife against the body to sort of avoid slipping onto the board. Yeah, so just sort of go down carefully about four or five times. You sort of get you get a feel for this as you sort of do more of them. But so I wouldn't normally cut legs like this, um, this big. I'd sort of do well, like I said earlier, I'd just use one of the other two methods. But as a last resort, this is the way I would have to do it. So just be really careful. So yeah, you'll see it when you get to sort of about halfway down, and then you're sort of good to go for a little bit more pressure. I'll run one, one more go and then uh, I'll show you what I'll do then. So a little bit more on that one. What I'll do then, I sort of give the first one a little bit more pressure and the sort of second leg protects the knife from going down onto the board. You should hear a click. If you're struggling, just score it a little bit more. Nice, so that's going to need a little bit more scoring. We should be good to go on that one now. So you've got your sort of cut there, that's lifted now, so that's good. Same on that one. So there's your click, same on that one. So there's your click on that one. When I get to the last leg, because I've already cut the legs around the back for the sake of the video, I normally saw the last one on a row, but with this one, I just get my iron on there. And uh, yeah, just melt the sort of leg and uh, the IC should come off. So you've got no damage, that's just flux in there. So you've got no damage at all. They're the ones I cut earlier around the back. Um, hopefully they're sort of in vision. Um, I'll bring them forward so you can see there's no damage on them. Try and get, yeah, so basically I've just cut along the top the same. You can see you've got no damage at all anywhere on them. So they're good to go then for. You've got no damage on them. But like I say, I wouldn't normally do sort of legs like this on these devices. I'd use one of the other two methods. But as a last resort, this is an option. Now you do, get your iron, pick the legs off and clean it all up and away you go. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to clean all these joints up on all three devices with wick and a uh, little bit of flux. I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll sort of uh, get ready for sort of refitting three new devices. So what we do, move on to the next stage. To the part where I'm just going to show you. So that's going to be useful for method two when I'm putting them back on. So that's that solder I'm going to leave on that IC. So I'm just going to quickly sort of wick off this. This one, that's where I use the heat gun. Some people would leave us on there, sort of uh, to aid the new one, but I, I like to take it back to back to the start, basically. So yeah, what I'll do, I'll take that off quickly, and then I'll take the legs off the bottom I see down here. They're still on there for when I cut them off with a scalpel. So I'm quickly going to add some flux, like I always do, when I sort of uh, clean up my pads. Just literally run a bit of flux over all the joints. And then yeah, literally just put your, your wick on. I like to put a little bit of solder on me on my iron tip. And just place your wick on there. And just pull it gently across. 
and that gets all that off. And some people sort of ask about the wick, but what you do when you've got the solder on there, you sort of cut the end part of the wick off and uh, just start with a fresh new bit of wick. And that way you'll be able to uh, sort of get more solder off because once the wick's loaded, it's quite hard to sort of wick it off. So they're all nice and clean, as you can see. So I've cleaned all eight pads with solder wick, sort of avoiding the resistors down there. And then all I can do, on, or sort of all I need to do on these ones, is just sort of flick the legs off. They're the ones that I sort of scalped off in the uh, in the last part of the video. I'll just quickly do the one side on this, and uh, that way we can sort of move on to uh, reassembling the new ICs. So again, a little bit of flux over the sort of over the pads. So you need a nice new fresh bit of wick. So just cut off what you've just used, just the end of it. Then you just sort of take it off the same as the first method. So just drag it across gently, sort of avoiding all the other components. Just get that last bit off. Just gonna cut the end of that off. Just get that second pad cleaned off. If you sort of need to, you can always add a fresh bit to the pads and that aids getting it off. So I'll do these ones in a minute, but they're just going to be exactly the same. So what I'll do now, like I say, I've cleaned them, I've left the solder on them for method two. I've sort of taken the legs off there and cleaned them. So what we do now, I'll click, quickly uh, clean this up, and then we move on to reassembling the first component. Right, so we come on to fitting uh, the first IC back in place. That's this top one up here. So this one I'm just going to do with solder paste. I've actually loaded some solder paste into a small syringe. But you can put a solder paste on with anything like the end of a tweezers or the sort of end of a cocktail stick. But I've just got a little syringe. Some people go sort of straight across the pads, but um, yeah, if you can, I just like to put a little in each pad. So I just screw it. you can always tidy it up after with sort of some tweezers. So I just get a little bit on each pad, as you can see in the video. Hopefully, it's sort of showing. I just go around the back and do the same on there. So you don't need too much. So that sort of loaded up all the pads up with a nice bit of paste. I'll just show you the back one. So you've got a nice bit of paste on there, same on the front. And yeah, so what you do now, just lower your component sort of uh, in place. And sort of push it down into the paste. So yeah, just push it down into the paste. And you've got sort of a nice amount. It squidges out the side, but that's fine. And then you can, uh, yeah, basically use the hot gun. I sort of concentrate on sort of showing the video on the, this side here, so you should see these go nicely. I've got the temperature to about 370 degrees, sort of centigrade, and uh, the air on my machine I've got to about 90, which is, yeah, it's not too much. So what I do then, is hold the IC in place, and uh, yeah, sort of away you go. And you should see this melt fairly quick. So let's just circle the device. This place should go, it's already gone there, you can see. So I'll just go around the back and do them ones. Just to sort of centralise the component up. And that's, uh, yeah, that's basically it. And just hold it in position till the solder's sort of set. Take your tweezers away. You should have a nice, um, yeah, nice device, or nicely sort of flowed. So as you can see, you've got a nice sort of flow on your, on your component around the front of the joints around here they flow nicely there's no sort of solder balls anywhere which you can get if you sort of run your fillet of sort of paste right across there you might get solder balls sort of flying around that's why i like to do each pad individually so yeah basically that's method number one that's just using paste and hot hot air so uh, yeah what we do now move on to method number two right so you move on to method number two out of the three methods one where basically I took the uh, device off earlier with sort of two soldering irons. Obviously, I had quite a lot of excess solder on all the pads, so I just used a fresh bit of flux, sort of used my iron and sort of took sort of certain amounts off each pad. And I ended up with eight nice sort of preloaded pads. Um, it's a bit like the last method, but instead of the uh, the paste, obviously, I've got sort of um, preloaded solder. Now, the flux is very important in this because unlike the paste, the flux is sort of burnt out of uh, all the solder, so you will need sort of fresh flux. Otherwise you might sort of, yeah, you won't get a great joint really. Flux is uh, obviously very important when you're soldering. Yeah, just basically lay it on top of your pads. And uh, yeah, just get the hot air gun. So I've got it preloaded to the same temperature, about 370. So just holding the, uh, the device with the tweezers, roughly in position. 
and then just yeah put the like, air gun sort of near the device central circle on both sides and uh, yeah away it goes you can really see the solder melting around the front the scan around the back as well so uh, that's it basically it's all nicely gone as you can see you've got eight sort of some nice joints down the front they've all gone nicely they've all gone around the back so that's what you're looking for all your sort of nice joints all gone and that's quite a nice way of uh, getting it on with preloaded solder so what we're going to do now i'm going to move on to method three which i'm going to stick this device on just the basic normal way with a uh, yeah just with a soldering iron so what we do move on to that one now right so move on to the final me uh, sort of method of these three this is basically one where i'm just going to fit this device as you can see i've just got it laying on the pads this is a standard way of fitting it just with like flux and solder basically starting from scratch so again you need very important get your flux and uh yeah run it across all the joints just get me other tweezers and uh yeah basically this is a standard way of fitting if you haven't got a sort of hot air gun this is the way i do it if your devices have got a thermal pad underneath you will generally need a hot air gun i've seen people try and sort of solder the thermal pad through vias around the back but to me that's not doesn't normally work it's a sort of pretty yeah it's a pretty rare case if it does work so you will need a hot air gun to do it that way so what i do is preload my iron with a little bit of solder i generally sort of tack these sort of devices just on one or two pins just do that one down there for instance and say yeah even that one next to it so sort of centralize the device on the pads and yeah you should be good to go then basically and uh, yeah you can just start on pin one or up the top end run it round the front and round the sort of sides of the device you don't need too much and then just go around the back and do them ones i'll sort of show all these in photos later just do them around the back so you've got a nice amount on all them eight pins let's get that one Ooh. That's it, all eight pins nicely soldered. So you can see you've got a nice sort of amount around the front. Sort of generally running down the sort of sides, around the sides, around the back of the device. And that's what you're looking for really. So that's basically the normal method, just doing that, all eight joints like that. And uh, like I say, if you haven't got a hair gun, it's just it's just a way to do it really. Flux, solder, and your solder and iron, it's all you need. So what I'll do, I'll clean all these sort of joints up now. I'll take a few photos. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching in on the on this video. Much appreciated. And what I do, I'll, like I say, I'll put sort of more videos up soon, but more photos up. You can also use all these methods on SO sort of 14s, SO 16s, and larger devices. So they're generally three good methods that will sort of help you out quite a lot. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. And uh, I'll see you all again soon. Thanks very much.